And I just want to say a great big thank you to Simply the Best and Clifford for believing in what we're doing and for believing that we need to impart this information to you, our viewing audience. I see that Oded, Oded, you, yes, you are here. I see you, I see you, I appreciate you. Oded is just our old faithful. And um, please feel free. I want this to be an open, an open show today, open discussion. So share it and let's get started. I have with me my good friend and also a champion of um, um, and a survivor of mental illness, and that is Leonora Deems. You know that Le um, Nora comes on the show every so often, so she's a familiar face to those of you that watch us um, frequently. Um, so I just want to say good morning, good morning to you, Nora. Good morning, Krishna. <laughs> good morning, my live audience. Odette. Yes. yes, yes, that's the camera there, okay? okay. Right there. <laughs> so in any event, um, Nora and I are going to talk about this because I think in some ways both of us have had a bit of experience or I've had thoughts at some point mm -hmm. of suicide. It's not something that the Bahamian society likes to talk about, but I think that it's, again, as is the discussion of mental illness and emotional wellness, I think that it's something that we need to address. Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk about that today. Yes. And as a bit of background, Nora, just quickly tell us, some people may be familiar, but some may not be, with um, what occurred in your life, I would say about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, you know, quickly, what is it that you experienced as far as the mental condition that you were a, labeled with yeah. by the doctors. Okay, I went um. through postpartum psychosis. And uh, that is the top level that you can go to after having a child. And, um, well, it makes you feel as if you're hopeless. You're lonely. Only you want going through this. There's no help or anything like that. And then... Where in the mind of a suicidal person, what they're doing is an escape for them. So it doesn't feel wrong. It doesn't seem wrong. Their conscience doesn't tell them that it is wrong. Right. That's how they have the power to take their own life. So in your case, postpartum psychosis, yeah. did you experience thoughts of suicide at any point? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, we, I, I did. Uh, actually, I mean, and I don't want to go in too much detail. Right, right. You know, but... Um, Whatever you're comfortable with sharing. Yeah. So, uh, but I know there's, there's, there, there's a part on your wrist that you could slice. So, right. for some known reason, I found a carpenter's razor. And a carpenter's razor is sharp enough to slice the vein. In my mind, and make it, make it known to this. I, I, I'm a believer, and I was a believer at that time. Yes. And um, the only thing I could do was take that razor and just, just slice the wrist. But for some reason, it's like a voice came in my head and say, no. You know, it's a spiritual part of it. And yes. that's how I didn't slice my wrist. So why were you even thinking to do that, though? Why go to that extreme? What was going on in your mind that made you feel that that was even an option that you had to consider? Because, you know, you go through mental problems. You have thoughts. You feel as if, um, why are these thoughts coming onto you? And if you're a believer, you're saying, this God that I serve should answer my prayer. He should have already solved this problem for me. He should, you know. So it's like, still hope, it still goes down to hopelessness thinking that you're the only one going through it. This is foolish that I'm going through. Since I'm a believer, <coughs> I'll just go and meet him and I tell, let him tell me what he has to tell me face to face. That was my mindset. Wasn't a good mindset, but that was it. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, like you said, nothing was wrong. And the fact no, that you nothing were, was wrong to uh, me. And because the fact that you were a believer, it almost like, what you're saying is that you felt like it almost gave you more confidence like, hey, to do it yeah like i could do this yes. because i know where i know where i'm going yes yes you know and the stigma in the, in the bahamas is you know you commit suicide you're destined to hell you have believers 
mm -hmm. that have thoughts of suicide, even attempt suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have that in the Christian community. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yes, I think we actually had that, unfortunately, that I think we actually had that happen last year, unfortunately, here on the island. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, would you say that suicide is a problem in the Bahamas? Well, I didn't think. And again, I want to put a disclaimer out yeah. there, peeps. Nora and I, we're not experts. No. We're not psychologists. We're not psychiatrists. What we are are persons who have experienced mental disruptions in our life mm -hmm. and are just seeking to share from our perspective what we think is going on. I see we have a lot of people tuned in. Um, Stacy, welcome, Stacy. Share the information. I see we have Nita tuned in, Honey Bee Wagus, Allison. I want to encourage you all to give your opinions, give your thoughts. Today is kind of like an open mic thing mm -hmm. because we want to know, you know, what's going on in the minds of our viewers as we discuss um, the effects of suicide. If you feel like you don't want to put it on the post and you want to ask a question or you want to make a comment, please feel free to call us at 357-5256 during the show and you can actually pose your question and it will, you know, that will give you the on anonymity that you would require if you don't want to put that on the actual feed. Um, Odette is saying suicide is a problem, mm -hmm. right? Now, the thing with suicide is um, we actually checked a few statistics. Yes, yes. And it was shocking. One of the statistics that was shocking to me, and these are bohemian statistics that we found. September, it was taken, I mean, in... This article actually came out by the local news, mm -hmm. Eyewitness News, right? September twenty, September twenty first, two thousand eighteen. And this particular one, what it did was they went into the community, and this was a random That's the survey. It was yeah, a the random survey. survey that was done, um, and they asked the community at large, just random persons, how many of you have ever contemplated suicide. And that was the alarming amount. That was an uh, the alarming. That was an alarming percentage, yeah. and the percentage was seventy-one percent. Now that was shocking to me. Those persons who said yes, seventy-one yeah. percent. Right. I have okay. Before I, I see Allison saying, I fight the feeling daily because of financial depression. Yes. That, no that job, is. no money. And Allison, that is very, very real. And that's why we're discussing it. You know, I think persons contemplate suicide for a multitude of reasons. Um, mental illnesses are closely linked. Depression being one, Lots anxiety of being yeah. one, psychotic, mm -hmm. psychosis of different types being mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. schizophrenia being one, mm -hmm. bipolar being one. And I find one of the most common ones, it seems to me, too, can be depression. And depression can come from a multitude of sources. Yes. Unfortunately, like Allison said, for her, she is going um, through it because of a financial situation in her life. And that's so understandable. The, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the financial situation brings on the depression. The depression brings on the hopelessness. And the hopelessness can can start to get you thinking about, you know what, am I better off not being here? Mm -hmm. or is mm -hmm. this just too much? Mm -hmm. um, do I just want to escape this reality? And obviously, Allison, you know, you are not alone in your thoughts. No. As I no, was saying, no. because I was shocked to realize that 71% of the community, and these were random persons, these weren't persons that were in a psychiatric facility that were in Sanderlands no. or that were in the Dyer Ward here at Duran. These were peop regular people. They just went to the community and they said, and there was 71% of them said they com contemplated it. Yeah. So that, that's a and, um, just just to, just to answer Please. Allison because Allison is going through it now and, you know, my heart, my heart, you know, really, really goes out to you because yes. um, in that, in that, in that, and not the survey, statistics shows that there is a high percentage of um, <clears throat> males in Nassau that goes through suicide. 
that commit attempt, suicide. Commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And the higher rate is here on Grand Bahama for females. Mm -hmm. And um, so my heart goes out to you, Alison. I believe that goes out because, like Alison said, she lost her job. Mm -hmm. She don't know where the money is coming from, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a case of, you know, I feel hopeless. I right. feel like I can't help myself. But that's a thought from the enemy. Trust me, right. it's a thought from Please the enemy. Please talk to Allison. Trust me. Yeah, Allison, if you could, I mean, if you have a friend, I mean, you, you, now you know us. You could inbox us. You know, we could, we could walk you through this because, mm -hmm. you know, it's only, it's only a season that you're going through. So, um, you know, you could contact us. Krishna just gave you a number. You could inbox me, Leonora yeah. Dames, and then we could see how we could assist, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't need to, I mean, and suicidal thought is not a good thing, you know. No, and I see Odette is also tuning in. And, you know, Odette is one of our younger viewers. Um, Odette is my cousin there. I love her so much from Nassau. And, um... You know, Odette is the advocate for yes, the young people yes, yeah. because Odette is, um, if, is she, I think she may officially not be a teenager anymore, but Odette is very, very young. Um, and um, like she's saying, with the young people, um, you know, suicide is real. So just for those out there, I want you to recognize that suicide is also, and, and depression, I should say, the things that do lead to suicide, mental unwellness, emotional instability, mm -hmm. that is a very real fact for even those that are young. And I say that because a lot of us are parents, aunts, uncles. We have kids that are growing up in this society. There's a lot of pressure. And, you know, we tend to discard or, yeah. oh, you don't have nothing to worry about. Um, okay, Odette said she's 21. I knew I was close. Yeah. You know, we, we tend to discard the emotions of our children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or our teenagers and say, hey, you don't pay any bills, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and what you, you have to stress about. <laughs> what you have to stress about. And I think one of the things, again, we always have to mention this when we talk about um, being in a depression or going through something, some type of mental un unwellness. A lot of times it, cannot, it, it can be illogical. So it may not be logical to you, a regular person, who has never experienced it, and thank God you haven't, no, or no. has not experienced it as yet, it can seem like it's illogical, like, okay, why is a teenager that's depressed? What is it in their life that um, would, would even, even make them think about suicide? But it's not all about that. It's not always logical. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes there are chemical imbalances going on in the brain that can bring about different mood changes. Sometimes something happens. Sometimes a person may feel, a under a lot of pressure from school, um, there may be bullying going on, there may be even abuse taking place. There's so many reasons why a young person um, can be in a, in a state of depression or can even be experience any other type of mental illness. So I just wanted to put that in there yeah. because Odette is, has been very vocal and I appreciate that. And um, I want to let people know that we cannot exempt young people from this equation. No. You know, we, um, we, we, only talk, we only talk about it during September. Right. And Odette says yeah. males especially yeah, because males. everyone has this thing that males aren't supposed to be depressed. Depressed, And I think, too, because males aren't supposed to be weak. Yeah. Because yeah. guess what? Even for me, as I experienced it, I felt in my mind that I'm a weak person mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, I'm going mm -hmm. through it. Why is it that I cannot be, um, um, why am I not feeling happy? Why am I not able to go and, and read a scripture in the Bible, being the yeah, believer that yeah, I am, yeah. and be able to just shake it off or get over it or get past it? And it made me feel like I was a, a very weak person mentally and spiritually, yes. you know? So I think a lot of times that's why we don't look at men because um, they're supposed to be strong. Right. Yeah, because we have be. this view that men are supposed to be strong. But I always thought men would have would have had the highest percentage anyway because men had so much on their plate. True. They have to but take care of family. Like they have to do this. And they have to I always thought that it was it would have been a higher rating. Right. But it seems like and this is where it differs, it seems like in the islands it's differing because according to this um 
survey that was taken, and this was by a Dr. David Allen. David Allen. Out Allen of Bethel, Nassau. And Dr. Bethel, yeah. Right, out of Nassau and Dr. Yeah. Bethel. Yes. It seems like the, do you have the exact percentage of, yes, they as have. far as suicide rates go at Sandalins in yeah. Nassau, we had, what was the well, rate? Well, this now? was, this actually, okay. Okay, 88% of Sandlin's admission for attempted suicides were males, and 12%, you had that? 88% at right. Sandlin's Nassau was males. 12% mm -hmm. were females. Wow. And at Duran, right here on our island, 79% of the admissions for attempted suicides were female. 79%. And 21% were males. That's an astonishing figure for here on the island with females. Right. So I, I don't know what, I, I wish they would taking, find out what the correlation is there because you see what's happening in Nassau. They said that lots of jobs, lots of jobs and um, loss of homes. Looking for the, the, the highlighter. You know, just loss of jobs and homes and just financial state of persons. Okay, so a lot and this of was 2018. So a lot of financial yeah. pressure, as in Allison's case, a lot of financial pressure is leading to a lot of depression. Yes. And that is leading to thoughts of suicide or attempts suicide. Yeah, Allison is saying, wow, the numbers are so high. Yes, they are. And, you know, it's a bigger problem than, than, than we care to admit. Now, what's interesting to me, and I guess at some point we will have to figure out, I'm wondering why it is in Nassau. The, the suicide attempts was so much higher with the men, but in Freeport at Duran, the suicide attempts were so much higher with the women, so there was an act, an exact yeah, opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm saying that's, that's serious. Yeah. yeah, I don't quite know why that was, but it's interesting to note, and it says to us people that, you know, they, this is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, people are, a lot of people are having 71% have thought about committing suicide. Yeah. And that's 71% of the general population in the Bahamas have actually thought about it, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a large percentage that have actually tried it and been unsuccessful. And then I think we have a smaller percentage that have actually been successful. So, um, you know... So this, this, um, let, me, let me just read this. Like I said, this is, this is from the... Eyewitness News, local. It says, according to Kev Keva Bethel, di Director of Research of the Allen Institute of Research and Training here in the Bahamas, anger and the evil violence tunnel stages attribute greatly to suicide attempts, which can start with any embarrassment and of insecurity such as job loss or no entitlement in a uh, dense society. One of the leading causes of suicide is the feeling of shame and when one struggles with high expectation versus reality. When we, came, when we come to the realization that we can't live up to certain expectations and it's actually we can't achieve all of our dreams, Dr. Bethel stated in a recent interview with the Global Journal, someone contempting suicide isn't dealing with hurt. They are dealing with shame. Most of the time, hurt, hurt turns into anger. And when this strikes the brain, the shame grips, occurs to shame. It mm -hmm. grips the shame mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it impacts hurt. So suicide is an impulsive <coughs> act that can occur while one is in the violent, destructive tunnel of shame. Okay, so, so shame. Like, it's like, you know, if you lost your job, you can't live up. So would you yeah, and as a man yeah. now, you can't provide and for that's your a family. Male. You're embarrassed mm -hmm. because your electricity may be turned off. You may lose your residence. You may not have a roof over your head. So now all of these expectations that, you know, you would yeah. have had of mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. to take care of your family mm -hmm. and that those around you would also have of you, yeah. you feel like a failure. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I yes. guess that I don't I don't know why it's eighty eight percent in Nassau because I we would we would have thought in Freeport that there were more opportunities in Nassau for males for yeah for persons. You, would, you would think so so you know I unless think they have some an expectation Afri of hey, men. unless that's some Freeport people over there in Sandalins. 
I would have given you a high five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what happens. Yeah. So when you get yeah. to a certain degree, they do. It's my understanding that the dye award is really only a temporary. Yes, it is. It is. So and the only rehabilitation center we really no, have, have is they, in, they, Nassau in Nassau. Nassau, yes. Because the dye award is really only a temporary uh, housing place, from what I understand, for those that are dealing with a mental and then, crisis. Um, you have right here it says suicide is a social scourge and because of the stigma attached mm -hmm. there is very little open dialogue about the topic right in order to prevent suicide people need to know that there is help it's available dr david allen holds a family group of over 40 locations so y'all who are in nassau right in this the province for the nassauvians yes yeah. all y'all who are in nassau or if someone's in freeport and you want to take your loved one over there do what you must Yes. So yes. David Allen holds a family group at over 40 locations in New Providence where people can seek support only if one does not exhibit harm to themselves. Now, if you start, begin to have, uh, uh, start harming yourself, you would need to go to the crisis center. So they right. have the crisis center. You have think, to. Yeah, but I think um, that's good to call know. The, that's call the good, authority. That's good to know. Yeah. And I think that the first thing we... I would say to people out there is, listen, if you're in a state of depression or whatever it is that you're going through and you do think of suicide, the first thing I don't want you to do is condemn yourself. No. Because, you know, sometimes you do get to that point where the hopelessness, you really feel hopeless mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff is going wrong in life and you're in a dark season and, you know, sometimes the human, the carnal side of us, will think, you know, is it just better off, like, not to be here? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to say is that if you have actually contemplated suicide, yeah. suicide, I don't think that you should beat yourself up about it. No. But if you find that these thoughts are becoming frequent, then you know that it's time for you, if you haven't already, it's time for you to seek help. Yes. And for those because numbers in Nassau, the group is... Uh, Clifford, you could do this. The group is the Family People Helping People Program. People Helping People Program. And it's 698-0155 or 676-8619. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us that are in Freeport, Donora, yeah. I think that a lot of times we are ashamed of the stigma that comes with mental unwellness or even admitting to somebody that you know what Cannot. i i was thinking of this that i have thought of suicide and you and must be very careful who you share it with too right but i think oh, that it's important wow. yeah. to share it it's, if yeah. you're getting to that point you need help yes the, the, the road you're traveling you cannot travel alone you need somebody who's gonna <coughs> bring you back to the reality of what you're going through is not going to be forever. You know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, we hear all these yes, things. Yes, yes. And sometimes they sound very cliche, but it's true. You know, if you are a believer, it may be time to really speak with your spiritual leader yeah, or a brother said, or a sister. Yeah. Um, because we don't have a lot of resources here, mm -hmm. but we have to use what we have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I say, find someone that you feel that you can share your thoughts with. Um... I don't know of any private psychiatric or psychological facilities here, but you know you can start off by just speaking to a family member, yeah, yeah. or yeah. speaking to a good friend, or well, like they I say, cho choose. They they said I mean, and in, in the article it says it's good to go to a minister or a pastor. I was just, just about to, to get say the thoughts out. right because yeah. a lot of pastors they are the very counselors and they, they are they counselors. Like, not, not all of them. Of them to be nah, not all yeah. of them are. So again, you have to choose wisely mm -hmm. because not all pastors um, mm -hmm. are Once familiar with degree in psychology in or theology, psychiatric yeah. care. But in most cases, they will. They're, they're somebody that you can talk to, or you can start with them mm -hmm. and see Just start, see yeah. see where it leads. So that's that's one thing I want to mention. We're talking about suicide openly. I actually, I'm not afraid to say, I understand the thinking of somebody who actually does it because of what I've been through. You know, I would not say that it has not crossed my mind. Of course, 
-hmm. There have been times when I felt, because when you're going through a real serious depression and life is really full of darkness for you, you can feel like I'm better off not being here, you know? Yes. So and that's, that's, it, it's, that's it's one of the statements. We're just keeping yeah. it real here, people, and, you yeah. know, I come out publicly and I say that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll talk more about that when we return, but we have to take a commercial break right okay. now. Share the video. We'll be right back. How about medium and wide with dress pumps, sling bags, flats, wedges, sandals, tennis, nursing shoes, career kicks and crocs. Men, check out our dress and casual shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, work boots and water shoes. And for children, dress shoes, casual, school shoes, tennis, cleats, sandals, ballet, jazz, christening and bedroom shoes. So complete your look at Richie's Calypso, your number one family-friendly Welcome store. back, Facebook viewers. Again, I'm Krishna Bo, and you are tuned into Real Talk. And today, we are talking about suicide. You know, that's the elephant in the room that no one talks about. Many of you know the background of this show, that we are very open about um, many things in society that no one else is open about. And we're very open about mental unwellness and mental illnesses. And today, we're actually talking about the role that that plays as it relates to suicide. You know, why do we have people committing suicide? Why do we have so many people thinking about it or persons that would have thought about it? And we want to put it out there. We want to speak about it because suicide is something that can be prevented. It can be prevented. It does not have to happen to your loved one. And it is not something that you yourself have to do. So we hope by sharing and by talking and giving you some information that if there's anybody else on the other side, anyone else or anyone on the other side of this camera who's contemplating that, that we are here to tell you that that is not your only option. And I was sharing my personal thoughts earlier saying that as a person who has actually gone through depression, there are times when, you know, you get so tired, you get so weary of um, just living because life as a regular person knows it is not life as a person who's going through a depression knows it. It's a very, very stark contrast. A person who's going through depression, anxiety, other mental illnesses, life is darkness. That is what they're going through. Um, you know, I heard somebody say it, and I think it's a very good depiction. You know, you walk through your day, and it's almost like a dark cloud just follows you. You know, or the person who is in, the, in, the, in the, the depths of depression is really seeing everything through, I would say, dark colored glasses. Nothing about life seems good. Everything seems bad, and you're not happy. You're sad. And you feel, you come to the, to the place where you can really truly feel like, you know, life is not worth living. And then you experience all these different emotions. Nora mentioned it earlier. You, you know, you're ashamed because you're like, okay, I shouldn't be experiencing this. And then I also think that you can feel like, you know, you, you start to become a burden to those around you, to those that love you. Because once you really get deep into the depression, you can actually become debilitated in some cases. Um, you, you, it becomes hard to hold down a job. It can become difficult for you to function in society. 
And when you get into, oh, it's such a complex topic, you know, I don't have enough time to go into all the aspects of it. But just having said all of that, the point is that it becomes a very, very dark existence. And as it relates to why you're in it, sometimes that even becomes a non-issue. The fact is once you kind of get in it, then you can start to get those thoughts that, you know what, my family's better off without me. Yeah. Even, you know, let me just do this and, and let them not have to deal with this. And like I said, you know, I've had those thoughts. Um, they've entered my mind. Even being a believer, it has happened, you know. So, again, like I was saying, please share your thoughts with us. Um, um, thank you for tuning in. We have Kelly. We have Brenda. Um, a lot of people just started to tune in. We want you to share this video because we are keeping the topic of suicide. We're talking about it this morning. It's not an easy topic, but we're talking about it and we're sharing. Nora was saying earlier that when she went through her psychosis, which was a mental illness that she experienced early in life, um, she also had thoughts of suicide, you know. Odette, I hear you saying you have that thought. But, you know, we just want to encourage you that when you do or if you do have that thought of suicide, I'm going to encourage you, and it's what I do with myself, as quickly as it comes to your mind, just say, devil, you are a liar. Because it truly is the work of the enemy. It truly is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the devil gets victory when we, if we take our own lives. That, yeah, he feels like, yay, you know, I got a victory in that. So, you know, um, wow, Odette is saying it would, it would just, just be, be easier if read it now. Because oh, it would just be easier if my parents only had one child. No, um, it would no, not. No, I it would not like again. And this child. is, and listen, and this is the yeah, sad yeah. Reality she about says, I felt like beside I was the youngest child, I was a burden on my parents. I don't think so, Odette. Um, oh no, 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 no. I know I, I know Odette's parents and I know that that is definitely not the case. But this is how the depression works. Yes, that's how it okay? works. Okay? It tells us and this is why I say, Lord, I tell you this is of the enemy. I do believe with all my being that Satan is at the bottom of this. Of course, Satan yeah. tries to get you to believe lies, Odette. And what you're saying is not reality. It's not fact. Because if I took the phone now and I called up your mother, who is my cousin, or, and I asked her any of these questions, she would passionately refute them. Mm -hmm. You know, you are a joy to her. You know, you have such an infectious, and, and, and Odette is, oh my goodness, such an infectious spirit, so passionate about life. So definitely those thoughts, but, they are but, incorrect. Yeah, but but Odette, that yeah. is the way depression mm -hmm. works. Yeah. Because it, 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 it just makes you feel like nothing about you is mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. You know, and that everything about your life is dark. So that is actually not a reality. And this is where I like to say, you know, when we get into the depression and anxiety, fear is really false evidence, evidence appearing real. real yeah. If you were to put the facts on the table. Or find exit and run. Find exit and run. That's wow. Right <laughs> if you were to put the facts on the table in Odette's case, you would find that every statement that Odette said, she said, I remember one day saying, I wish my mother had a miscarriage with me. Odette, your mother would so vehemently disagree with that because you have been a joy to her mm -hmm. you know and say it would just be easier if my parents no it would not be easier because children are a blessing and you have been nothing but a blessing to your parents you know but I, and yeah. I'm just openly refuting yeah. these things in Odette's case I know her parents personally mm -hmm. so I know that it's just the enemy it's just the enemy Odette and, yes. you know, yeah. like you said, it's like a dark cloud. And you do have to fight it. And it's not easy. You know, fighting depression is hard. Very hard. You know, you Clifford and I, momently, listen, and this moment. is what I don't understand. Clifford and I, my husband, we were talking about it this, this week. Why don't the positive thoughts flood your mind like that? Why is it that you can wake up or, 
or like automatically it seems like the you negative have to, you stuff. Have to train, you have to train your mind. You have to literally train your mind moment by but moment. But why can't it just moment. be natural? But because when you were born in this world, you were born an evil being. Even though you didn't know evil, evil was all around you. <coughs> Excuse me. So wow. You can, you can have those evil thoughts. Yeah, so it <laughs> seems like evil but thoughts are just... Listen, um, I mean, with Odette, right? Odette, and, and not just you weren't going through it. Like we said, no. they took a survey. 71% of persons in the Baham, uh, where they took the survey, thought had thoughts of suicide. It's not just you. But Job, you know, Job said, Job, Job went through the same thing that Odette went through. And why did he go through it? He lost his children. Yeah, he lost wow, his house. That, that was very he lost devastating. All his stuff. And then his wife mm -hmm. said, Why don't you curse God and die? That's when Job said, I cursed the day that I was born. I wish my mom had closed her legs. Right. That's and, a similar know, statement that Odette some people made. State he was born in February because February only has a certain amount of days. Right. You know, theologian says that. But, you know, it's not just you, Elijah. Elijah in the Bible, after he killed all those prophets and Baal, he gone to the, to, to the, the, to Beth she, to Beth Seda and tell the Lord, you know, take my life. Only me one going through this. But the Lord say, boy, shut your mouth. 7,000 people I have in this nation that's going to, that I have for me. That's going through the same thing you're going through. So it's a hassle. It's not just you feel that way. You have other persons that feel that way. And I thank God that she started uh, helping all those young people who was, I mean, Odette. Yes. I thank God that you started helping those people that you could mm -hmm. show them what not to think about and the thoughts that they have. Like Krishna say, refute the thoughts. You know, bring Yeah, you have to in. refute it. I think I had listened to Joyce Meyer mm -hmm. one time. And um, I thought she made a very, very interesting point. Um, you know, for a lot of us who do go through these things, a lot of people who are really not very um, familiar with what dealing with depression mm -hmm. and all these other mental illnesses are, they're not familiar with it. They will say stuff like, well, you know, you just have to put your mind on good things and think about good things. And, you know, in and of itself, that's not a bad statement mm -hmm, to me. Mm -hmm. However, what Joyce Meyer did, and I think this is so crucial, she said, you're not, if you're going through that, or if you're a naturally negative person, or, or if you have a propensity. I don't know how negative people do it. I don't a, know. How, if you have a propensity to being depressed, what you have to do is you have to, when you get the thought, the thought is going to come. Mm -hmm. The negative thought is going to come. You so have to now it. try replace the thought. So as opposed to trying to push the thought out of your mind, that's very rarely is that going to work. Yes. You know, uh, okay. very rarely yeah. is that going to work as far mm. as pushing the thought out of your mind. Yes, yes. What you have to do is you have to replace the, the thought. The bad thought, so, but a good one. For example, yeah. and oh my God and Savior above, I have done it a trillion million times. When I think about something, okay, Krishna, why don't you, you know, why don't you just give up? Right? Something like that comes across my mind. Then I say, okay, Lord, I can't give up. I have a good end. I start refuting, refuting that thought. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I have Affirming, to do. Yeah. As opposed to trying to say, just take it out of your mind. You, to get it out of your mind, you have to actually replace it with something positive. I see Kelly saying, um, wake up every morning thanking God and then speak positively. Positive affirmations daily. daily. Yeah. This is very, very, very important mm -hmm. for someone who is going through mm -hmm. and who is starting to experience maybe or contemplate suicide, positive affirmations. And I know these things, they sound kind of trivial, mm -hmm. but it can save your life. Yes, it could. You know, looking yes. in the mirror... I said to myself this morning as I felt that pressure of just being so down, I said to myself, I am fearfully and wonderfully, and wonderfully made. Despite how I feel, mm -hmm. I am God's child. Despite how I feel, all things will work together for my good. Despite how I feel, you know, and that's kind of like you got to, 
And listen, you got to really dig in deep. And because like Odette said, it's a challenge, but it's a it challenge. Is, it, it is a challenge. And um, Odette also says praying, affirmation, all of that. And I think sharing your story helps heal. Yes, it does. Uh, she's put it on her blog, which is great, Odette. Uh, you share your story, that's true, and then you'll mm -hmm. find other persons who are going through the same thing. <coughs> and glad that you share your story now, they yes. can open up. Because when you keep quiet, it almost like eat you, eat away in you. Yeah, the first thing about any type of mental unwellness or any anything that you're going through emotionally and you're in a dark place and you're not well, the you have to open up. Yeah, because to. this is the bad part about not opening up. If you don't, you can sink deeper into this pit of depression. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you don't have to get to a very depressed state, you know, if you can open up about what you would yeah, have experienced. Yeah. Sometimes in hindsight, looking back, I feel like maybe if I had done that initially, mm -hmm. my situation would not have gotten so severe. Yeah. But you think to yourself, I'm strong, I'm woman, I, I, could do this. I could do this. Let me just keep pushing. You know, I think there's a term out there. I think, what do, do they say? Keep pushing or keep moving. And I mean, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you got to stop. Yeah. When, I, when life becomes yeah. overwhelming and you really feel overwhelmed, sometimes you can't push. You, can, you got to take a break. You got to stop and, and talk to somebody and, yeah. and, and see how you can get yourself. And like, you, like you said, speak yeah. about it. I was... Um, it's so amazing. I mean, and a lot of people don't believe in the Bible, but trust me, read the Bible. It shows you in the Bible because I was reading Judges when you say speak, you know, talk to someone, speak to someone. Don't keep it mm -hmm. on your mind. It eats you mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading the Bible in Judges and there was a Levite and a Levite had a concubine and he went into a city, mm -hmm. the city of the Benjamites. <coughs> what happened is that the Levite who had the concubine went inside the old man house mm -hmm. and the men of the city came to take the man but he said no don't do that to this man don't do nothing to this man this man is a man of God because he was a Levite mm -hmm. why don't you take my daughter on his concubine and do what you must but what they did was they the old man pushed the concubine out the door mm -hmm. so that they could do whatever with the concubine but when the concubine when the morning came the concubine was found before the door the Levite man never said anything. He never said anything to the man. What he did was he put his concubine on top of his donkey, rode straight to, 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 um, straight to Judah. And what he did, because he didn't speak his mind, he took the concubine, cut her in 12 different pieces, and put it all through the 12 tribes of Judah. And the Bible stated that when Judah found out they went to him and they said, this man was a man of God. He said, but you must speak your mind. Because that man didn't speak his mind, whatever anger, frustration, hurt, whatever went in him, he mm -hmm. just went and he just cut off. <coughs> and he put up to the 12 <coughs> tribes of, of Judah. Oh, so wow. when I read that, I say, Nora, you ain't going to have nothing staying in your mind. You casting every, you're taking everything out. I just let it out. Right. So, you know, you have to speak your mind. And it's good, you know, you read the Bible because the Bible teaches you and it speaks mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Speak your mind. If yeah. something is on your mind, tell someone. And, and I think, and I think we have to get past that. You know, yeah. we feel like we're weak if we're having an emotional crisis. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean, you know, sometimes stuff happens. As with Allison, you know, you're in a financial crisis. Yeah. Yeah. You may have lost a loved one. You may have been diagnosed with some type of illness, whatever it may be. Sometimes things happen. And then sometimes you just, you just... Go get off your rockers for no reason. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're feeling very depressed. Life seems yeah. dark. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems right, even though that may not be a reality. So whatever the case is, it's really, really important to, to speak your mind. And I do think in doing that many times, um, you can prevent the situation from mm -hmm. escalating to mm -hmm. suicide. Um, Odette said something earlier about knowing your trigger points. And yeah. this is something to be discussed. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Right? If you're a person <laughs> and you know that there are certain things that are going to send you into a depression or going to make you anxious or that are going to stress you out, again, you have to recognize this and you have to know where to place the boundaries in your life. Yeah. Learn to say no. 
Yeah, and that's another show. All yeah. on its own. Um, Colette says, second. Clifford Bow, I love the support. Yes, Colette, he supports me. Um, I thank God for him because yeah. when you're going through this type of emotional crisis, as I have been experiencing, it is, I think it's impossible to travel that road alone. No. So when you do have a spouse that supports you, that is, you know, that is very, very important. And it's very important to keeping you balanced and keeping you level. So I thank God for Clifford and I thank God that I have him in my life um, to provide that support to really tell me sometimes when I'm speaking negatively, Krishna, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get through this. Life is not always going to be like this. Whatever it is I need to hear, you know, it's good to have him there. And like um, Cole was saying, you know, you're smiling though. Everybody thinks it's okay. That's what happens because most yeah. of the times persons who commit suicide, persons who say, I just saw them yesterday. Didn't see so that happy, coming. And it was so jubilant. Right. It's not an appearance. It's right. It's meant to say you have to treat like uh, the same article, a different, I mean, a different article said. Right. You have to treat suicidal as the way that you would treat a cold, the way that you would treat a flu. I mean, the way that you would treat, treat cancer. It has to be an awareness. To say, right. you know, you have to, it has to be treated. It can be right. treated. You know, right. the thoughts of it. Right, because I do think that's a very, very crucial point. I think of um, Kate Spade, remember the famous yes, designer, they, they, they who hung herself. Them, yeah. And then you have so Anthony a, Bourdain, who was... They had everything <coughs> that was the, tangible in life. So right. it doesn't have to be, you know, something that... That because they had they had money beyond they, they had, had money they, they had were money, millionaires you know Kate but, Spade was a top yeah. class designer mm -hmm. Anthony Bourdain worked for CNN and he was traveling the world yes, yes. experiencing all these different cultures mm -hmm. all these different foods life seemed so exciting mm -hmm. but behind it all yeah they, behind that smile and behind, behind that, that smile, yeah yeah behind the the riches yeah. behind the material wealth they were suffering. They were suffering, and I think the world was shocked to see. And let's talk about even, remember Robin Williams? Robin Williams, one of the funniest comedians. Remember Robin oh, yes, Williams? yes, yes, yes. One yes. of the funniest made persons laugh, made all of us laugh, laugh yeah. and died, committed suicide because of depression again. So I think one of the very important things that we need to do as though mm -hmm. as family and friends mm -hmm. of loved mm -hmm. ones who are going through sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you got to look beyond the surface because because you know it's also that way with mm -hmm. me i'm not a i've never been a person that has an unpleasant demeanor mm -hmm. i am going to always issue a smile um you know regardless most times of what i'm going through once i go out of my four four walls mm -hmm. i'm going to smile and Yes, I'm fine because I don't want to be rude or whatever. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you just don't go out showing all that stuff on your sleeve. Um, my friends hey, and my family. Hey, one, one day you did. <laughs> yes. You say, listen here. Yes, I'm going through a mental issue. I'm not doing good. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, very often you can hide yeah, behind a yeah. smile. And for those of us who are ignorant as it relates to depression and anxiety yeah. and all these other things, we somehow equate it with material wealth. Again, mm -hmm. happiness fulfillment none of that truly truly comes from material mm -hmm. wealth that comes from the inside and that's kind of where depression starts mm -hmm. on the inside, inside yeah. you know so just because a person looks happy it doesn't mean that they're okay yeah. it doesn't mean that they cannot commit um, um suicide yeah. right now again i just want to say thank you to my partners for allowing us to be able to share this information yes. richie's calypso down there in the churchill square Please support them, one of our family-friendly shoe stores. Our oldest, I was there to say, our oldest existing shoe store, been in business for over 40 years. Uh, please support them. A great big thank you to Simply the Best Productions, who's responsible for the producing of this show. Um, where would we be if we did not have what we have to get this information to you? So a great big thank you. Um, we're starting to wrap up. Um, Kelly says, yeah. i got to put on my glasses. That is key. A solid support system is vital. And this is true, Kelly, but one of the things I want to point out, you can only get the support if you mm. let people know. You know, if you do hide behind that smile, 
if you do hide behind your four walls, because that is what a lot of depressed people do, and I'm guilty of it as well. I have my moments. They, a lot of times, they just don't come out. They don't say anything. If you don't open up, no one knows what you're going through most times. So the support can only come into play if you are open about what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I want to just put out there, you know, that you don't want to stay silent. You don't want to suffer in silence because it can really work against you in so many ways. And unfortunately, illnesses like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, unfortunately, sometimes the end result is suicide. Mm -hmm. But... That's the way they and then suicide doesn't, so the person that's going to commit suicide feels that they're going to escape. They're going to leave the hurt. Right. But they have to realize that guess what? You're leaving loved ones behind. Some of us leaving children, husband, cousin. That, that goes on into almost like a spiral because the person that committed suicide, their loved ones say, I should have seen that. Now they're in a state of going into depression. I should have seen that. I could have mm -hmm. done better. What did I miss? Um, I should have said this. I should have said that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you said we were going into that as well. Yeah. With, well, I yeah. do think as family members and friends, mm -hmm. um, we need to be more, more alert. alert. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be more diligent. And we need to stop being so cavalier about certain comments that people make. Because, again, when... Um, you're going through depression or a dark time or you're even contemplating suicide as the article that we referred to earlier mm -hmm. in the show mentioned mm -hmm. you have to listen to the way a person speaks, speaks. Yes. some of the words they use if you are paying attention a lot of times you can pick up even if you don't know the whole gamut of the situation you can pick up that something is not right yes. very often this is what we do Hey, Nora, how you doing? I'm doing well. Okay. <laughs> so that's how we go about our yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we even do that with our spouses, yeah. with our children. How was school today? Hmm, it was okay. All right, now what, what happened there? Mm -hmm. They said, hmm, it was okay. What, Something, what that yeah, mean? What, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, why are you, hmm, why is the, the tone in your voice? not good you have to you be know, intentional yeah we have yeah. to be intentional we have to to look deeper yeah. you know you see a friend and and she's not as talkative as she used to be mm -hmm. or you notice that she's becoming very uninvolved you know don't just call Stay say right hey back, i'm calling yeah. to check on you okay how are you i'm okay and you still don't see her you're still not hearing from her something isn't right mm -hmm. you need to dig deeper because, you know, truly we are our brother's keeper. Yeah. And when a person is experiencing an emotional crisis, sometimes they are so far gone, they don't even know how to help themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so I do think that we need to be more intentional. Now, there are cases where you try to help and, well, there's nothing you can do. But, you know, well, you know that you've tried. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's one of the things that we, we need to do because it can be... We can be very cavalier. Uh, what Cola say? Cola says knowledge, awareness <clears> is much, much in need on mental illness in the Bahamas. It's much. We just uh, we just have to keep talking about it. I think so, and bringing you know, and bringing awareness it, yeah. to it, and and letting you know, like today, like you know, if you have contemplated suicide, you're not a terrible person. No, no. I've been there. Nor has been there. I'm yeah. not gonna say that I've not thought about it. I think anybody that has gone through a mental crisis of any type has mm -hmm. thought about it at the very least. Having a thought of suicide is a mental problem. Yeah, yeah, you know, so don't necessarily condemn yourself, but let's see how we can get past it and continue to work our way through it and not give up. And, lo and love living. Yeah, and that's yeah. what suicide is. I think it's mm -hmm. giving up. Yeah. And, you know, when I heard about Kate Spade and all those other persons, you know, a lot of people say, how could they do that? Hmm. And that's Unless very you've been on that road. I uh, right, <laughs> and that is a very judgmental yeah. comment that a lot of people say, I don't understand it. You know, she had all that money. She had all that this, she had all mm -hmm. that that, you know, but it's not about that. It's not about that. And um 
you know, like you say, suicide to many, it, it provides relief. A way even, of escape. Because mm -hmm. when you are living a, in a life of depression or anxiety, it's a life of turmoil. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not living. You're surviving and it's not, you know, it's not a good way to live. So, you know, we continue with the hope that one day we will be out of that and that it will get better. And I think I'm that's sure what, get better, yeah. right, and I think that's what probably we need to convey most is that hope, yeah. you know. Okay, okay, so my producer, it's one hour, <laughs> that time is gone, but I don't want to close without saying that if you are going through any of those darkness that we talked about. The numbers are there. You know, yeah. the depression, the anxiety, uh, schizophrenia, you know, you're not alone in this. And if you have had thoughts of suicide again, you're not alone in this. And we just wa I just want to say to you, don't give up. Get help. Get a support system going. But don't ever give up. You know, it's Satan. It's the enemy that wants us to give up. And don't give up. That, that's all I could say. Don't give up. Seek help. Nora, mm. what would be your parting words? You said it all. Just oh, don't give up. <laughs> that's all we could say. Don't give up. Just fi find your support system. You know, some numbers, some numbers uh, we, just put, we just put up. So you could call those numbers as well. Or seek you know, a consular, or seek the crisis pastor. Center, or consular, or pastor. Mm -hmm. But if you already started doing what leads to suicide, you're going to need some type of medical assistance so you know just remember that just remember you need that support system and if you know of someone <coughs> who's going through that or they went to the hospital to do it most likely they'll have already seek um, a psychologist so just make sure you know seek pastors ther a therapist mm -hmm. um, and the crisis center right yeah and get okay. friends around you right Yes. Okay. Well, with that, um, we hope this has been informative and helpful. So, see you next week.